Hey everybody. So a while back I posted a short of myself using an ovilus like app in the West Virginia Penitentiary. You can find the extended version here. Quiet all of a sudden. 18. 18. 18 what? Look up. <laughs> I see a face up there. Huh? I said if I see a face up there, I swear. I'm looking up. Where are you? What? I just said 18. Look up. Can you tell me how old you are? I realized after posting this that a lot of people don't actually understand how these apps work and they assume that the words are gathered based off GPS location, off random numbers, it's just pareidolia, the words are just completely random, I've heard it all and it just kind of made me realize that a lot of people don't fully understand how these apps are working and they think they're a lot more complex than they actually are. So hopefully I can clear that up show you how an ovilus can be manipulated in an intelligent way and how it can be manipulated by environmental factors that are just completely random and spit out words that are completely meaningless. So hopefully this video kind of helps you better understand the code even if you're not a programmer and yeah let's get started. All right so the first thing that we need to do in order to make an ovilus app is to establish what our word bank is going to be. This is actually something a lot of people think is essentially influenced by your location. So they think that it's uploading your GPS coordinates and pulling down a list of words related to that. And while technically it's possible, it's very unlikely because it's a lot of points of failure and it's a lot of work when it really doesn't need to be. So basically what we are doing here is we are establishing our word bank and it's going to be a string array. So a string is essentially any literal string of characters. So it can be a word. So if you want to do the top 1000 words in the English language, for instance, you can do that. If you want to do numbers, you can do those. Surround them by quotation marks, though. You can do two words with a space in between. And you can do sentences or paragraphs if you want. So, there's nothing really holding you back from picking whatever you want. And a lot of the apps that are on the App Store now do tend to try to make it more ominous and creepy by saying stuff like, My bones, or I died here. Stuff that may seem paranormal and may give you a false sense of hope when you ask a question and get back something that seems intelligent. It is entirely possible that if you would say, like, ask, why are you here? And you got back, I died here. You may think that's an intelligent response when it's just a random word being spit out, basically. So next up, we have the previous sensor data and the sensor data threshold. These are more important if you're actually running an infinite loop, which you would be doing in a real app. So it's going to essentially run when you hit start and stop when you hit stop. For the sake of this console app, we're not doing that, but we're still putting this code in here. So... Essentially, the previous sensor data is going to be whatever the sensor spit out the last time. And the threshold is going to be the threshold to determine whether or not another word is spit out on that run, or if we are skipping it for that specific iteration. So, 
for this, it's pretty low. Uh, real world, you might not want it that low. But essentially, you could increase this value to essentially the higher the number, the further apart that sensor reading has to be in order to spit out a new word. The idea for this is just that you don't want to spit out the same word repeatedly and you don't want to spit out like every word in the word bank back to back. Basically, if say you're reading from a temperature sensor and the room's heating up because you're in it, you don't want that to just keep spitting out the word constantly. Next up, like I said, you would be running an infinite loop if it's a real app, but because this is just fake example app, I've only run it 10 times, and that's essentially what this is saying. We're starting at zero, we're going to 10, and it's going to run 10 times. So, inside the loop, the first thing that we want to do is get sensor data. So that's going to be completely different for whatever app you're trying to write because if you are doing it on a like an actual phone you only have access to some sensors I don't know if Android and iOS have access to the same sensors some of it is going to be considered health data or you know sensitive user data whatever so if you're using an app you're actually a lot more limited to what those readouts can be, like what readouts you can actually get. So again, this is junk data for the sake of just showing the example of how it works. In a real world scenario, this is gonna be pretty complex. It's going to either be the sensor that you put on your Arduino or those libraries, or it's going to be your phone sensors, whatever. And I suppose technically it could be a random number because that's exactly how I'm getting the numbers here. Don't shoot me, I said not to do that, but most of them do not do that. So, yeah, it's possible, but probably not happening in your app. And that's just because it's so easy to get actual sensor data that you don't really need to just fake it. And the next step after we get that sensor data is we want to make sure that the actual sensor data minus the previous sensor data is over that threshold and if it's within that threshold or like under it then we are just skipping to the next iteration of the loop so we don't want to spit out the same word twice next up we are scaling it to make sure that it's within the arrays bounds the bounds of an array is essentially you know, because this is a zero-based array, this is zero, one, two, and three. If we tried to pass in an index of four into, like, when we're actually calling the values here, so, like, you do the, the variable name of the array, and then you do the brackets, and then the index. If we try to pass in four, this is going to blow up. If we try to pass in negative one, it's going to blow up. It has to be between 0 and 3, and it's basically whatever the length of this array is, minus, so as you can see down here, you can do like the word bank dot length minus 1. That's just making sure that it stays no more than this last value. And once we figure all that out, and we make sure that the index is actually within the bounds of the array, and we can actually pick a word based off of it, we're going to set the word to whatever is in the word bank at that value. And then we're going to spit it out. And I have some other junk data here, like the sensor data and the index, so you can actually see it in the run. And we have down here, we are setting the previous sensor data to the new sensor data. And what that looks like when you hit run. So yeah, here you can see it's spitting out the selected word. I know this, this is a lot of data, but it's spitting out the selected word. It's showing the value that our sensor was picking up at that point. And it's spitting out the index that we have chosen based on that value. So 
yeah, because of the value in this case, the sensor data was 0 0.083, and this is rounded, so it's probably something higher than that. But we determined that the index value for that is 0, and we picked the word at the 0 index. So it's it's really that simple. It's not It's not nearly as complex as a lot of people think, and yeah. That's really it. I mean, you're basically just making up a word bank. You are picking a generic value. You're converting that to a zero to whatever, and you are spitting it out. So, yeah, it's really that simple.